In case you missed it, this fence is in a heap of trouble. First of all, the post needs to be reset. The top rail is not long enough to reach all the way over there. The fence has been cut. Other than that, it's a pretty good fence. We're going to show you how easy it is to make these repairs. The first thing we need to do is to get the fence out of the way so we can go to work on the post. The next thing we need to do is to remove the hardware over here. That ought to come out pretty easy. And let's keep these things. We might need them later. Now the fence is going to collapse out of the way. And we can get this bar out of the way. And I didn't get hit in the head with it. Next, we're going to take this post out. What we're going to do is bail it out at the bottom. That's going to give it a lot more stability in the wintertime. The water can't come up and make the post rise up like this one did. So a little more, more digging, a lot of fun. We'll have a better post. What we're doing here is giving ourselves a little margin of error here. It's like wearing a belt and suspenders. We're going to attach it up here in addition to putting the big blob of concrete down here so it never will stray away from where we want it to stay. Now I'm going to show you the easy way to mix concrete. All we're doing is pouring the dry concrete in here. When we get this whole bag in there, then we're just going to add water and do a little mixing with a stick from the top and we got it made. Now, as they say, all you have to do is add water. That's going to soak down in here, but we're going to help it a little bit. It's going to take about maybe 20 to 30 minutes for this to set up and under here, but we can go ahead and cover it up now. It will set up. That's not a problem. We also have to level it here so that we've got room for our fence and it's down, not down in the ground like the other one was. Now we have cut the top rail to fit and we've got a new socket for it to fit into. The reason we had to do a new one is because, hey, they don't wear out. It was okay, except it just wasn't long enough. While the post was leaning, it was okay. But when we got the post back there, it's too short. So we'll put this one in place and it's gonna be a much, much stronger fence because this is gonna to help to uh, support it. We'll put the nut and bolt in here and I'm just gonna finger tighten the nuts on here until we get all of them in. Then we'll come back with a wrench and tighten everything up. After weaving this end rod through one end of the fence, we're now attaching the nuts and bolts over here to anchor it down. When we get that done, we'll go back and go to work on the other end. Now you probably wonder who's been holding the fence while I've been working over here. Here's a little trick you, that you'll find very helpful, and that is when you're working by yourself with chain link fencing, you want to use a little piece of wire over here to do the holding for you. Now what we need to do is to pull this over and see which one of these is going to touch the post. That tells us where we're going to need to put this new end rod. You probably noticed that we didn't cut this to size. And the reason was because we didn't want to take a chance on cutting it too short. Now we can put this end rod in there and we know where to cut out the rest of the fence. Now we just have to cut off this excess here. Now the last step is to secure the fence to the top rail here with this wire. You know, this has been a really easy project. It took us about an hour to do. If you had a bigger fence, it might take a little bit longer, but it only cost us about 30 bucks. Well worth it.